Hello and welcome to Pet Watch, a program about the Williamson County Animal Center. I'm Debbie Sims and I'll be your host today and I have a special guest with me from Mars Pet Care, Lisa Campbell. Hi Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm great. Uh, Lisa is the Director of External Affairs. So what, what exactly does that mean in a corporation like Mars? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's just it's kind of all things communications, public relations, um, purpose and community outreach. Great, and you do a lot of that, and I know the Mars name is well known because of the candy business, mm -hmm. and people recognize uh, that you guys have a huge uh, Mars Wrigley division, which mm -hmm. encompasses all the gum products that the Wrigley yep. uh, Corporation built over the years, and then the Mars candy products. Yes. Which which of those would people recognize as? Um, yeah, I mean, you'll recognize Snickers, Skittles, M&Ms, um, so many of them, Altoids, all kinds of brands. Wow, so. and that's a worldwide company, Mars yes. is. And one of their yes. largest divisions is pet care. Yes. Which, uh, that's why your your division is called Mars Pet Care US, is that yes. right? Yes, okay. our, our North America, North America. Um, division is headquartered right here in Franklin. So what pet food products yeah. are made by your corporation? Um, we make a lot of brands that you would recognize. Pedigree, Caesar, Iams, um, Greenies, Nutro. Um, and that's our, our pet nutrition business. We also have Royal Canin, which is more in the kind of veterinary side, pet specialty, and then veterinarian vis businesses as well, like Banfield, Blue Pearl. Oh, the, the Banfield Hospitals and Blue Pearl Specialty Yeah, that's part of our, our broader wow. pet care business. Great, um, and I know those a pedigree is near and dear to our hearts uh, at the shelter because we mm -hmm. started out at the Pedigree Feeding Project several yes. years ago, yes. and our shelter has been uh, fortunate with the Mars presence in Middle Tennessee to become part of that pedigree feeding project, which means we don't have to purchase. A huge yeah. portion of our budget would have to go to pet food. Yeah. So we sure love it when we can call you and say, we need a couple <laughs> more pallets. Of well, we love to be able to help out. <laughs> dog we know food. it makes a difference. Yeah, yeah. dog food uh, and cat food. So um, yeah, Royal Canin is a great product. You mentioned that, and right mm -hmm. now it's kitten season at the shelter. So. We have a lot of that going yeah. to our foster yeah. families. <laughs> um, but we're here to talk about the pet care division today. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that uh, the Mars presence in Middle Tennessee has been building mm -hmm. over the years. I know uh, the, some of the world headquarters for the candy uh -huh. division moved here, then Nutro and some of the dog food brands, yeah. but then it's grown again. And you've even built your own building, right? Yeah, yeah, so we definitely have um, some presence with confectionery in the Tennessee area, um, and we just recently opened our new office, which we're, we've called the Pet Friendly Workplace of the Future. We're so excited and proud. Um, it has everything designed with both people and pets in mind, from our Wi-Fi enabled dog park outside. So if you want to have a meeting and have your dog outside running in the park, um, you can do that and enjoy the outdoors. Or if you have a particularly busy day, we have doggy drop-in. So there's a small dog area and a large dog area, so you can drop your dog off for a couple of hours. Or if they just want some playtime, or you, they just need to get some energy out, you know, you mm -hmm. can drop them off for a couple of hours. So it really makes it easy for people to be able to bring their pets. Um, we also know that it just it makes a difference, right? People that we talk to and research that we've worked on shows that people are less stressed. Mm -hmm. um, it builds community and collaboration. And we know that potential employees are more likely to choose a pet-friendly workplace over one that's not. Wow. And, and that all started with a, being a pet-friendly workplace. And I've yeah. been in your new building. It is yes. amazing. Yes. Um, not <laughs> only you. is it unusual that it has so many pet features, mm -hmm. uh, such as your own little dog park, and uh, you have pet water fountains at the- We do, at we the, do, Where yeah. you go get your coffee, there's also uh -huh. a, an automatic watering station. There is, yeah. 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 Um, but the inside for the people is so different than a regular workplace. So it, it's moving away from the closed up offices yep. and the isolation, and it's moving in a yeah. collaborative way because I know I've when I've been in there uh, two times now, one for a tour and one for an event, I would see little clusters of people. And, and it, if I was in a traditional workspace, I would think, well, they need to get back to their office and do a little work. <laughs> and close doors, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and that's not the case at all. It's not. Um, so Mars traditionally is an open office environment. Um, and we've really taken that to the next level in our new office. It's really focused on community and collaboration. Um, so there are all types of different workspaces where 
if you and I are working on a project, we might not want to sit at our desk. We might want to go off to a little booth area and have space to work together. Um, and then even the fabrics and the furniture has, you know, is also pet friendly. So mm -hmm. I could bring my dog Sweet Pea and we could sit and talk <laughs> and, you know, go where we want to. But that's been a, a big part of our new office that we've really enjoyed is just that community aspect as well. It's a fun place too. And, and I said, I said when I was over there, there was people passing through with their dogs, which they yeah. had obviously brought to work. And it was a busy day with a lot of people in the building. Uh -huh. And I thought of all the other, you go in the lobby of another building and wait for an appointment it's silent <laughs> there's no one there there's just this the desk at the front and here it's like oh here comes here comes so-and-so with so-and-so and one of your one of the girls that I was working with one of the associates um, Christine said oh wait that's my dog's best friend coming by <laughs> so she had to stop and so yeah. her dog could take a visit with so it does create camaraderie and, it does and uh, you have a you have several hundred people on that new yeah, campus which is do. on the other side of Carruthers on Innovation mm -hmm. Way. Ovation, it, ova yes. Ovation uh -huh. Way. Okay. And um, it's a new area. Brand new. And Beautiful. we're the first ones there. Yeah. yeah. More than 60 acres of green space, too, which is great. But wow. it's so true what you were saying about, you know, building that community, that collaboration, because I might know, oh, this is this is Carl. Oh, and this is Carl's dad. Like, you know, it <laughs> helps you to, to meet people. That's right. So. And I love that if your dog can stay at your desk and then you take it out to the dog park. But if you do have to have a meeting or yeah. leave the building, you can drop it off at uh, yeah. the doggy daycare, I call it, <laughs> the yes. area yeah. where associates can sign up and have their dogs sort of registered. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I've heard there now that people are planning their time in the doggy daycare <laughs> so their dogs are with their best friends. Friend. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So that's very important. <laughs> it's very, very important. important stuff. It's like you have a slot when so and so is going to be right. there. You got to plan I'm, out your day. I'm going to bring my dog down then. Um, but anyway, I saw every variety of dog too. So nothing is. Uh, you're not only pet friendly, but yeah. you're breed friendly. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, and as long as a dog likes to go to work yeah. and behaves, which everybody yeah. seems to over there. <laughs> yeah, and it's all about responsible pet ownership. Right. Right. I mean, we have etiquette you know your their expectations for people and their pets so mm -hmm. it's it's the responsibility of the associates and you also have to make sure that you're taking care of your pets and we have things like um, we have a leash system where mm -hmm. your dog might have a green leash if your dog is totally open to anyone coming by oh. petting saying mm -hmm. hi or a yellow leash if your dog is maybe a little more shy or reserved so mm -hmm. we do those things to make sure that it's a, a good environment for yeah. everyone yeah, and I like that um, on the people side, I like that you don't have to sit at the same place every day, the same workstation. Yeah. Some days you might not need a workstation. You just need your phone or your um, exactly. iPad. And why take up space and yeah. camp out on a desk? with? Uh, so it, it does look different, and it, would, yeah. it I'm sure it takes some getting used to for but not long because I would love it. <laughs> yes, because we it, have fallen in love pretty quickly. Yeah, I bet you have. And I love they have you have the little mini meeting rooms all over the building yes. that are the names of the rooms are named for different breeds of of cats and products mm -hmm. so you might meet somebody in the Himalayan cat room yes <laughs> for a meeting at three o'clock exactly yeah yeah and it's very uh techno savvy don't I mean you've got wi-fi everywhere we do including the dog park mm -hmm. and the courtyard out front so it, it just it goes back to really what you were saying before you know you, you don't work the same way every single day and it really right. fits that that purpose you know whatever your purpose is that day or whatever you're working on right as long as it gets the job done yeah and people are happier than they would be forced into exactly an office an or office a cubicle or a and you have to yeah. sit here every day and be quiet because you might disturb somebody else um, I love it, and you and there are some innovative spaces in there with large spaces with uh, mm -hmm. padded seating. So if you want to have a mini meeting, you can yeah. just go there and get out of your desk, get up yeah. from your desk, and go work somewhere else. Um, we don't have that luxury. You may have a line of people who want to apply for jobs over there soon. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of people sneak their pets into the shelter. <laughs> Yeah, you'll go in and there'll be a dog. You're like, wait a minute. Oh, wait. That's an extra wait. dog. Oh, yeah, I brought my dog today. <laughs> Nobody says anything because we love it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, now, a few years ago, uh, Mars launched the Better Cities for Pets program. And yes. people may remember uh, we set uh, a little park up on Main yeah. Street with the green space. And uh, we had adoptable dogs out there, people walking dogs. And what did, what does the Better Cities for Pets program encompass? Yeah. So we started the Better Cities Pet 
Better Cities for Pets program to really help make cities more welcoming for people and pets. Um, the program you're speaking of, we piloted, it's called Pets Welcome. That was back in 2017, started right here in downtown Franklin, and it really was to help people identify places that are friendly for pets. Mm -hmm. um, within downtown Franklin, we still have nearly 100 businesses that are opening their doors or restaurants who are opening their patios and allowing people to spend time there with their pets. So it's, it's really great because if you're, you know, you're at work all day and then you've got to hurry up and get home and, and let your dog out. But if you are like us and you're you know, able to bring your pet with you and then you're able to go somewhere after work and go shopping or grab mm -hmm. a bite to eat and you're still able to bring your pet, it just makes a really big difference. Yeah, it's, it's not fun to you know, run in from work Say hi to your yeah. pet, and put then it back run in the crate, right or say bye. Yeah. I'll see you later. And it, you know, um, so on Main Street, especially in the immediate downtown Franklin area, I know people have probably noticed the program yeah. because of the multiple water bowls and little yeah. flags that were out, and yes. there's also stickers on yes. windows. So uh, most of the restaurants you said are on patio areas, mm -hmm. and then I've seen a lot some retail stores that say pets, pets welcome. welcome. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know 10 Cottage allows pets inside the store and a number of others do as well. They do. Yeah. They do. And they're cute and, and people that travel here mm -hmm. bring their pets with them. So I think it makes those 1.7 million people that came to Franklin last yeah. year a little happier because they, have, they don't have the dilemma, what do I do with my pet? It does, I, and it's yeah. great for business too because what we've seen is that you're willing to stay longer, you spend more because you're staying longer because you're not rushed to get right, home, right. right? Because you don't have your pet waiting at home for you. So you, you're, you're able to spend more time. Mm -hmm. We also this year with Better Cities for Pets launched our city certification program. Um, and we just announced our inaugural list of the first 25 cities who were certified. And I'm very proud to say that both Franklin and Nashville are on that list. So it's been, you know, really great for us starting here in our own community wow. and in our hometown. And, you know, we still have work to do across the country and those 25 cities are, you know, represent mm -hmm. all areas of the country, mm -hmm. but we're continuing to work with our partners like U.S. Conference of Mayors and working with cities individually on, you know, how they can assess their cities to understand mm -hmm. where they have opportunity areas, where they have strength, Mm -hmm. um, and giving them some tools and resources to help them, whether it's you know things like the Pets Welcome Program right. or tools to become a, to have a pet friendly workplace like we do. So it, it's mm -hmm. really all about providing those tools and resources. And um, many of the apartment complexes are now providing their own little dog parks. Yes. Uh, even pet mm -hmm. services. I've heard that they will even come in and walk your dog for you while yeah. you're at work. So we're living in a different world. We are. Um, where we are. people aren't accepting. I put I leave at seven and come back at seven and my dog's bored and is waiting yeah. to get out to the bathroom when I get yeah. home. That's that's hard on an animal and people realize that now and they they want to do things to make their animal's life better. Um, yeah. And I think it's all feeding off of the love of animals and making life better. Absolutely. For people and animals because yeah. you wouldn't have heard of that years past. You know, yeah. we build dog parks that you drive to, but to actually rent an apartment or buy a condominium or a home and one of the selling points is mm -hmm. going to be where's your dog park and right. are you breed friendly and right. that's another area that yeah. I'm sure uh, that Mars has some interest in um, and I'm seeing that change too yeah which is good yeah it makes a big difference our purpose at Mars Pet Care is to make a better world for pets mm -hmm. and the reason we work to do that is because they make a better world for us Mm -hmm. You know, they make our they they make our lives better. They are constant companions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, children who have pets are more social and have stronger self esteem, and they help keep all of us more active because you've got to take your pet out. You know, you've got to take right. your dog out, so it gets right. you out as well. And it's it's an explosion in in our society. I think of of um, pets that provide specific services for people yeah. who have things like PTSD or a disability of some sort. Uh, that we've recognized for years the comfort that animals can give us, yeah. but their intelligence, I don't think we've discovered it yet I even know. all the things they can do. <laughs> Turn on lights, open, you know, answer yeah. phones, <laughs> get people's medicine. My friend's diabetic alert dog saved her life oh, when wow. she passed out on a walking path, and he went back to the car and got off the wheel well. He got her insulin 
and alerted wow. somebody else and took them back down to her. So it's amazing. They, they, they truly um, are amazing. Yeah. Um, we do some work with Vanderbilt Children's Hospital mm -hmm. um, where we're doing some study to understand, you know, how can having pets there help, you know, not, of course there are medicines that are required and sure. other things that are required, sure. but having that pet there can help, right. you know, reduce the cost of care, decrease mm -hmm. the time that they're that they have to stay mm -hmm. um, there's so there's all types of programs like that there's a program that one of our brands Caesar worked on called first day friends and mm -hmm. it was about kids going to a new school for the first time oh. and the stress that, that they feel sure and what if you could bring your pet what if you could bring your dog with you like mm -hmm. how much would that help and it just mm -hmm. helps to break down those barriers it instantly creates a bond between yeah. the kids so Plus, there's so many roles that if they you're play a child in the hospital you miss your dog or your cat you do and to have another dog or so cat comforting yeah. brought by by therapy uh, therapy pet brought in uh, yeah. distracts you from uh, the discomfort it distracts yeah. you from the worry and you get a little bit of peace for a while. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, that that's amazing. I'm, and I don't want to leave the cats out because cats can be a comfort to they people can too. They too, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, one of the things that we're happy to participate in with Mars is the upcoming uh, Mars Pet Care Adoption Weekend. Yes. And the dates for that are August 24th and 25th. Okay. And how many years has Mars done this kind of thing? So this is our 11th year. Wow. Yeah, it's one of our biggest activities of the year, something that we look forward to. Um, it's just such a great opportunity to bring people and pets together. These pets who, needs ho who need homes and mm -hmm. families who are looking for a pet to add to their family. So mm -hmm. it's, it's great. We're able to do this with hundreds of families. Um, and it's also a big volunteer opportunity for our associates. Um, we normally have upwards of 50 associates out there volunteering, you know, handing out bags mm -hmm. with food and information mm -hmm. or um, just being there to support and answer questions. So it, it's a really exciting time for us. Well, the Williamson County Animal Center will be participating both days and so will Metro Animal Care and Control and the National Humane Association. Yes. And yes. Uh, at our shelter here in Franklin, uh, we'll be open that Saturday and a special day of Sunday. So yes. it's Saturday and Sunday, uh, August 24th and 25th. And what Mars really does is pays all the adoption fees for those two days. Yes. And so we had kind of a record uh, year. Last year we had 47 dog and cat adoptions and some chickens went to one of your employees. I was going to say, I think I know who got those chickens. <laughs> I know who yeah. got those. She will go name us Ashley. But, <laughs> but um, you know, we just happened to have some chickens that we needed home. I love and it. it. Just, it, you know, those things happen. They just, they're meant to happen when they yeah. do. I think she heard one of them out back and goes, what was that? <laughs> I need some chickens for my farm. Like I'll so, take them. Um, it, by the way, your associates are, are just the most fun to work with. And They're so they great. have such a variety of stories. And, yes. and uh, there's that not one of them has one pet. They all have multiples. So you better get busy because you get that one dog. Um, I do have a turtle. I got a turtle. Oh, a turtle. Also, okay. So, yeah. okay. Um, and you mentioned that in addition to paying the adoption fees those days for the adopters mm -hmm. um, that Mars will give them a wag bag and that's fun yes. to get too because they get a sample of your food products yes which is is exactly what we've been feeding them in the shelter right and you get some uh, advice your you mm -hmm. have a Facebook page for the Mars pet care and the better cities for pets yep. and then a lot of wonderful advice on your uh, website yes so uh, that's a great place to go and I would highly recommend that to people. Um, so if they want to come out to the shel our shelter, um, we talk with all our adopters and ask them what they're looking for in a pet mm -hmm. um, because adoption is a commitment. It is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a family that, member that you're bringing on. Yeah. Right. It's a new family member and what are you going to do when you get home? So um, it's important to talk those things over with people. Well, we yeah. appreciate Mars's presence in the community. We didn't even get to the Pedigree Foundation, which people should look up and all of the wonderful things they yes. do worldwide. Yeah. Uh, and they now have a, a presence in your building. We do. So the Pedigree Foundation is all about helping to end pet homelessness. Um, and they do have a new retail location in our new office that's open to the public. Um, and all the proceeds go toward helping pets find forever loving homes. And they have cool merchandise that 
do. Dogs rule. Yes. Ask me about my dog. That kind yes. of t-shirts. And if I can't take my dog, I'm not going. I'm not going. Yes. Everything from a <laughs> coffee cup to a, a, a children's and adult clothing. So uh, yeah. the Pedigree Foundation is that. Can the public come in and visit that store? Is yes, that the intent? absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and if you want to learn more about it, you can take a look at pedigreefoundation.org mm -hmm. or visit our bettercitiesforpets.com website that you referenced earlier if you have questions about adoption or yeah. about the program. It's a fun place to shop and... Um, find some cute t-shirts and get yeah. a little little um, view of the building and the innovations that you yeah. guys have over there. And we just appreciate everything Mars does for the community. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we appreciate you sponsoring this adoption weekend. Uh, well, and I hope you. we set we a new record August so 24th I hope and we do 25th. Too. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Lisa. I want to remind our viewers of a couple of other things that are coming up in August. Um, on August 17th, our shelter will be at the Black Expo and Youth Fair over at Johnson Elementary School. That's on Glass Lane in Franklin. Um, there will be an author showcase, a kid zone. We'll have some animals there for adoption, some celebrity appearances, some Titans cheerleaders, um, local news uh, anchor Leland Statham, who's a very popular weatherman here in town. Lots of entertainment and lots of fun. That's all day on Saturday, August 17th. You can look it up at um, on Facebook. It's called the Black Expo and Youth Fair from 10 to 3, and we're happy to be a part of that. There'll be games for the kids, um, some kittens and dogs to pet, and uh, we'll hopefully have some adoptions that day. And then, of course, the next weekend in August will be uh, the Mars adoption event at our shelter at Metro and at National Humane August 24th and 25th. And then also on that morning of August 24th, before we get started with the adoption event, we're having our monthly $10 rabies and $15 microchip clinic at the shelter from 9 to 11 on Saturday, August 24th. That's for anybody that'd like to come by and uh, get their pet microchipped, which really is the absolute best way to assure that if your pet ever gets out, which everyone's does, it's nothing to feel bad about, but when they do, we would like to be able to reunite them with you by reading that microchip. Now, I had a lady call me one day who said, my cat just got out. Can you turn on the microchip and find it for me? And I said, <laughs> no, that's not exactly how it works. The microchip is embedded there, and you have to have your information registered online. So if we get your animal and we read it, we can call you. So I had to clarify that, and, and ever since I've, I've decided I'm going to explain the microchip just a tiny bit better to people so that they will understand that it's not a tracking device. And there is an uh, important part that the owner has to play. On Tuesday, August 27th, we'll be back out at Scouts Pub in West Haven for their yappy hour, and they welcome pets on their patio. Um, they're part of the Mars Better Cities for Pets program is welcoming pets uh, while you have dinner. We'll be out there on August 27th in West Haven at Scouts Pub. Hope you'll join us then. And we'll be closed on Monday, September 2nd for Labor Day. And I hope that by learning about uh, show on this show, the things that you do, and the things that we talk about, about Mars Pet Care and events, that you will realize that the shelter is the first place and the best place that you should go to get a pet. And I think mm -hmm. our guest Lisa might agree with that, that shelter pets are the best. They, they are. really they are. are. And we so appreciate you coming today and Thank you filling so much us for in. having us. Yeah, for having filling me. us in on everything it. Mars does and the upcoming adoption event, which I hope people will take advantage of yeah, in we're August. We're excited to partner. Thank you. All right. Thank I, you. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. I hope you join us next time for Pet Watch.